Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the regular council meeting of the town of Grand Bay Westfield on March 25th, 2024, to order. And I believe it's 7 o'clock on the nose. We respectfully acknowledge that Grand Bay Westfield exists on the traditional Wollastic Way land. The lands of the Wapanaki people are recognized in a series of peace and friendship treaties to establish an ongoing relationship of peace, friendship, and mutual respect between equal nations. The river that runs by our town is known as Wollasta, along which live Wollastic Way, the people of the beautiful and bountiful river. We, the staff and elected representatives, pay respect to the elders, past and present, and descendants of this land. So good evening, everybody. And uh, as you can see, uh, Mayor Merrifield is unable to be here. She sends her regrets. And I know she does regret this because this has been an interesting week, I guess, for the town. The past week, we've had good news and bad news. I would like to start by acknowledging that this past Friday was an amazing day for Grand Bay Westfield. We received a grant of over $1 million to support the development of affordable housing for families and seniors in our community. So stay tuned in a few moments um, in our presentation session as our CEO will explain what we're doing with the funding. And I also want to tell you that we are working with the Church of the Resurrection to develop more seniors housing. So this is very exciting for all of us. On the bad news side, however, as I know we are all aware, this past Sunday saw many of our neighbors waking up to distressing situations. Saturday night saw approximately 2.25 centimeters of rain all in a very short period of time. The Public Works Department is going through town to clean things up and to clear stormwater catch basins in preparation for more rain, which we know is forecasted later this week. Um, just to give you an idea of what's out there, in one culvert we found seven basketballs blocking up the, uh, the drain. And most storm drains are plugged by either debris, such as branches and twigs, or leaves, sediment, and gravel. So do what you can, take a look at the drainage, and really kind of take a look around your yard, because there is more coming later this week. Right, so that's the end of my quick remarks. I'd like to have a record of attendance here to let everybody know that everybody is in attendance except for our mayor. So thank you everyone for being here. I can move on to item five, with this, which is agenda approval. And the motion is that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield approve the agenda of March 25th, 2024, with the addition of one item, item 11G, federal infrastructure spending not keeping pace with population growth. Have to be addressed under agenda items 8C and 8D. I believe that is. So, can I have a motion? Okay, Councillor Millman, second it. Councillor Buckham, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Motion carried. Right. And uh, number six, disclosure of conflict of interest, and there being none, uh, we can move on to item seven. And the first item under item seven, which is public hearings, presentations, delegations, and petitions, is an overview of the 2023 audit, which will be provided by Nick Malastetenik from Korean Vets Auditors. So thank you very much, Nick. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Ms. Deputy Mayor, uh, members of council, distinguished guests and staff, uh, Thank you once again for selecting our firm as your auditors for the year 2023. Uh, we have audited the accompanying consolidated financial statements of the town of Grand Bay Westfield, which comprise the statement of financial position as of December 31st, 2023 and 2022, and the statements of operations and accumulated surplus, change in net financial assets, debts, and cash flows for the years that ended, and a summary of significant account policies and other explanatory information. It is our opinion that the consolidated financial statements present fairly, in all material respects, the financial position of the town of Grand Bay Westfield as at December 31st, 2023 and December 31st, 2022. The results of its operations, changes in net financial assets, and its cash flows for the years that ended accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. And do not worry, I will not read the rest of it to you verbatim. That is just to say that uh, in technical terms, that you, it is a clean audit report. Uh, so the town enjoyed a, uh, well, a, a year highlighted by uh, three things in, in, in our minds, which would be uh, a surplus in the Excuse me. Um, a 
surplus in the general operating fund of $270,000 and a surplus in the sewer operating fund of approximately $34,000. Uh, so in addition to those two thirds operating fund surpluses, uh, the year was characterized by significant significant investment in infrastructure and and and, uh, and the assets of the town, specifically, uh, which amounted to over $3 million. Uh, and th that $3 million investment included uh, a significant amount of equipment used for snow removal. Uh, so, the, so the town has become self-sustaining in terms of, of dealing with those issues. Uh, and, and as well, uh, with the addition of a new fire truck. And uh, the, the other side of that would be the incurrence of a debenture in the amount of $1.3 million. Uh, and those, those are the highlights of the year for the town, if you have any questions. Uh, so I'll open up the floor to council. Anybody has any questions? Um, thank you for your presentation, Nick. Um, are we in good financial health? I, I think it, it, the surpluses aside, I think I think so. I think in terms of uh, uh, the, the town is in good good a good financial position, uh, both to mitigate future issues as well as deal with the current ones. Thank you, Council. Have any other questions? I don't have a, a question, but I would just like to acknowledge um, the staff for this is the first year of a. A clean audit meaning um, there were no adjustments so what was what was submitted is what was approved so that's really a, a testament to the staff and their thorough work and hard work so I just want to acknowledge that and you should be very proud thank you Jason. moving forward is there anything we could be doing to improve what we're already doing uh, I, I think in terms of uh, improvements, uh, one of the things that uh, that's the town's been very good at the last few years is anticipating that question and actually taking steps before you even ask it. So, like case in point, I was just previously speaking with James, and he had mentioned that the town was pursuing improving its. Uh, uh, it's financial accounting system. I think right now that is probably the biggest the Achilles heel of, 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 the, of, of the municipality. It really needs something that integrates things so that people are not maintaining manual spreadsheets offline and having to, having to go to numerous places to access the same information. We really need more of a, a cohesive solution. Since so you've got everything else in place, why not that? Any other questions for Nick? But I just want to I just reiterate what I said. Thank you very much for your work for the town, and thanks to our staff. And we were all saying, oh, there's a lot of numbers in here, but nothing here was a surprise. So I think that's a testament to the reporting done to us and to the work done uh, by staff and you all working together to provide this and we know it. So we're really happy. Thank, thank, thank you very, very much. much. So and I do have a motion to finish this. It's down under 11A, but I'm going to move it up here so we can make a motion here. And the motion is that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield approve the Town of Grand Bay Westfield audit report and consolidated financial statements as at December 31st, 2023, as prepared by Curry and Betts, CPA, and forward to the province of New Brunswick for approval, and that the Town of Grand Bay Westfield Council appoint Curry and Betts as the town's auditors for the fiscal year 2024. Motion. Councilor McIntosh wants a second. Okay, Councilor Rubin. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we have a second presentation, which is what I mentioned or alluded to earlier in my comments to start the meeting on the Housing Accelerator Fund, which was our amazing announcement on Friday. So our CAO, John Hinton, is going to take us through a bit more information on the Housing Accelerator Fund. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. <laughs> and uh, Council, um, before I start, I just want to thank our leadership team. It was a all, all hands on deck last summer. 
Uh, I put in a lot of time as did the other members of the leadership team to do this in-house. We're very proud of the fact uh, that we did it in-house. And uh, but we also want to thank Envision St. John for the statistical support that they provided us and EVP for reviewing our policies and our goals. Um, but anyways, I'm very proud of the team that uh, we have here and I just want to acknowledge them before I get into the, to the presentation. And then my final thank you, Council, is to you. Uh, you've equipped us to be able to do work like this. And uh, so thank you for letting us get on with it. I really appreciate that. Okay. So your worship, as you alluded to at the beginning of the evening, uh, we're receiving slightly more than $1 million um, from the Housing Accelerator Fund. And um, so what I'm gonna do tonight is just go through a little bit about the fund. Uh, we have actually done through the work of the development officer, um, a lot of work that they would have paid for, but we, have, we got about a third of the stuff done um, before uh, the half, the Housing Accelerator Fund uh, was uh, <clears throat> announced. And then of course, not just the objectives that we have, but also there are other things that we need to do as well. And there's seven more, or a total of 12, that we really should be focusing on. Uh, so um, really, what is HALF about, the Housing Accelerator Fund? It's about, um, I want to use the word expediting, but how do we speed up housing development? And it's really for affordable um, housing for families. So the definition is a minimum of two bedrooms. And for seniors housing, it's one bedroom. And uh, as you mentioned at the top, uh, you worship, uh, we are working with the Church of the Resurrection uh, to, do, uh, to do that. And I would also like to remind council and let members of the community know uh, that last summer we had uh, hired an MBA student who pulled together uh, a business plan outlining what the business may look like. And that's forming the foundation of the work that we're going forward. And that business plan has been submitted to the New Brunswick Housing Hub. Uh, so, you know, we have to remember the work that our MBA student did as well. Uh, so, uh, what is it? And these are all the boxes that we had to tick off to be able to have a successful application. Uh, the action plan, which you're going to see more of this evening. A housing growth target, which is listed a little bit lower. Uh, we did the housing needs ass um, uh, assessment. And then uh, what we haven't done is submit periodic reports, but they will be coming uh, as the time permits. I think the first one is due the end of May, beginning of June, right? And we'll be ticking off all those things here uh, in April. So we have to, over the next three years, there's 123 units that we're looking at developing. And this goes towards council's 10 year goal of increasing the town's population by a thousand and a new building assessment of $200 million. And I want to emphasize new because we don't need a housing bubble to inflate our assessment growth. We want new buildings. And the end result uh, is that we should be looking at uh, having more ability to constrain tax increases in the future. But we need to grow to be able to restrict the type of tax increases that people have seen in the last two to three years. Uh, so what have we done? And, um, you know, uh, we're promoting high density development without the need for rezoning. Uh, and some of that has seen more delegation of authority to our development officer. Uh, more uh, housing density on a single lot. Uh, one of the things that we've had inquiries about is if I want um, an accessory unit, can I have a granny cottage as an example on my property or can I have a tiny home or something like that? Um, infill developments, um, you know, there's these vacant pieces, how can we encourage people to develop those? Um, and then uh, we've revised parking requirements and we've actually reduced what's needed. Uh, we've also ensured that our development and amenity charges are clear. And we're also waiving public hearings on affordable housing projects that conform to the official community plan. Really, we're trying to streamline the development process. Uh, we've also implemented measures to address or prevent floodplain or climate change risk, which we experienced this past weekend. Uh, and um, we already have incorporated the climate adaptation plan 
Uh, however, we've applied funding to do a new plan. Uh, we, uh, through the leadership of our development officer, we've already finished implementing it ahead of time with the installation of a solar array. So we will be looking at uh, overland drainage issues and, and short duration heavy rainfall events. Um, updating guidelines, including road standards, uh, inclusionary zoning, uh, and then uh, implementing changes to decision making. As I referenced earlier, delegating development approval to uh, the CAO and I in turn uh, delegated to the development officer. So those are all the things that we have achieved. That's about a third of the eligible items and we've done that um, from uh, the previous council initiating uh, the new municipal plan and zoning bylaw and then we've been updating it annually with council. So what are the items that we have to, what are the action items, the action plan that we have to do? There's first one is incentives, costs and fee structures and this will be uh, going to council uh, uh, next meeting. And uh, we're also going to be removing uh, permitting costs for developments with a minimum of six units and two bedrooms per unit. And we're also um, talking, we've already met with realtors and developers that, you know what, we want you to build here. We need homes here. Uh, we're promoting increased density. Uh, so there will be an uh, incentive for that and um, we've al we're already using the business plan in conjunction with the housing hub in New Brunswick. And uh, we're in the process of signing a mutual aid agreement with the City of St. John and we're just waiting to hear what the City uh, response is to a uh, legal review. And then we're looking at uh, adopting a policy permitting uh, mid-rise apartments. So that would be something that is three floors or more, uh, starting with four. And then uh, we want to develop housing partners. So the mayor mentioned, deputy mayor, pardon me, mentioned that uh, we're partnering with the Church of Resurrection. Uh, and uh, we'll be looking for other potential partners as well to ensure that uh, we have um, affordable housing in our home. Uh, so what's involved in the... Um, Incentive program, uh, well, first off, there's uh, for development, uh, for eligible costs up to $35,000. Really, what are the barriers that a developer may experience here in Grand Bay, Westfield, that they may not experience in another municipality? So for an example, uh, rock outcrops, we have uh, issues with that. An environmental impact assessment because we're on well systems. Uh, and I'm gonna be speaking to that a little bit later. Uh, hydrology studies to make sure that there's enough water. Uh, if we go to a multi-floor seniors complex, uh, an elevator will have to be installed. Uh, overland drainage, which I think everybody experienced this past weekend. Uh, water supply management, how do we ensure, given that we're well-based, that the, the new housing units have water, but also that uh, it doesn't detrimentally affect the neighbors. Uh, and then finally, wetlands management, you know, that, that we have some marshy areas and things like that. And the government may have work that needs to be done um, to protect that. And then finally, uh, development approval and building permit fees are a way for qualifying properties. So a qualifying property is a minimum of six units with two bedrooms each, or um, 12 single bedroom units for seniors. So those, that's the base level. And now we also have a post-completion incentive. And again, it's uh, basically we're looking at doubling or going in units of uh, six and then 12. So again, the minimum unit is six units with two bedrooms or 12 independent senior living units. And it's 5,000 per year for the minimum for 12 units. It's 10,000 per year for two years. 24 units, uh, 20,000 for three, and then it goes on to 40,000 times five. So if we're able to have a developer who comes in and builds uh, 48 uh, housing units, say similar to what's on Colonel Nays, they have a minimum of two bedrooms, uh, they can expect to, re to receive a combined incentive of the uh, investment from the grant for infrastructure, uh, for development, and this and the wave development fees, fees 
of around $275,000. That'll be the, the net effect over the course of the five years. And of course, um, the, uh, um, the property tax stuff will come from that unit. And uh, it's not all up from cost. We don't have the cash flow to be able to do this all at one time. Uh, infrastructure and planning. And again, some of this is tied up. Uh, new items here is updating the asset management plan uh, to ensure that uh, new and anticipated development is included. I already referenced the new climate change action plan. And then um, we're looking at doing a new active transportation plan, but just a reminder, people this year that we're looking at a recreation hub and uh, a trail plan system and then the active transportation plan is for 25 I think it is and then later uh, we're also uh, set aside money to develop a transit plan so that uh, we can have a better transit between us and locations in the city and uh, then as I mentioned earlier a grant for hydrology Disposal of town and land, it's not that we have a lot, but we want to have an effective process. And this is something that we'll be looking at in the conjunction with uh, our consultant. And then, um, you know, can, once we figure out how we're doing it and where we're selling, or what we're selling, then we'll be looking at marketing the town land. Um, you know, the, I, I want to give my kudos to our development officer uh, who's uh, streamlined the process. Uh, he's got a fairly quick turnaround system more. And now uh, we want to continue to look at that. We're looking at software so that a developer can just load stuff up one time and then our development officer can uh, process it from his desk. And uh, we also want to increase approval times for permits. Uh, we've already enhanced the housing needs assessment. So that's something that's already been taken care of. And uh, yeah, we're basically looking at how can we ensure that we're effective in doing what uh, we're doing. Now there's other things that we need to do beyond just the five items that are receiving funding from CMHC for the Housing Accelerator Fund. Well water advocacy, um, this is something that we've already engaged in and uh, we're discussing. I believe we put in um, a resolution to UMB in the fall. Water and wastewater systems, this is more of a long-term goal, uh, but this will take the region united because there are pockets from Grand Bay Westfield over to Chris Panzas uh, and then Hampton further on where they're still on uh, well water. Uh, if we're going to be able to uh, capture the growth that's anticipated, um, the delivery of potable water uh, will be an issue. I'm not saying it's an issue today or tomorrow. Uh, but as a region, that's something we have to keep our eyes on uh, in the long term. Environmental reviews, this is another uh, resolution that we sent to UMB. Currently, the time frame is about, it can be up to 18 and a half years, and I think one of the numbers we heard is 35 to 50,000. And uh, so I don't understand why it takes so long. Uh, when I was in the Northwest Territories, we were able to turn them around in six weeks. Uh, so there's other issues here, but this is something that we need to advocate for. Immigrant housing needs, this is something going on. It's tough to address housing needs for immigrants when we don't have um, uh, a, vi a viable and convenient transit system to get them back and forth either to school or to jobs in the city. We're already talking with proper, you know, the province dur uh, during fiscal reform discussions about property classes. Um, you know, this is a great boon for residential and for commercial. We can subdivide different classes um, and it allows council to have more tools so that uh, the tax burden is, uh, can be delegated differently. Uh, as I said, we have already enhanced the housing action plan and then uh, we'll, you know, right now we don't foresee this, but if we need to acquire land for uh, affordable housing, then there may be money available. Uh, but council knows our capital situation. It's a little bit on the challenging system, right? Uh, challenging place right now. So that's it, uh, Your Worship, in a nutshell, what HALF is about. Uh, if council has any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, or who's ever worked on different sections might be able to answer them. Council, any questions for John? Okay.
something I can express for all the time. I'm so excited to have this now. I think it's transformational. It's uh, the work that was done to develop the plan, but now actually being able to see it go forward is very exciting. And I don't know if anybody really understands how difficult it was to get this one. Not only was it a, a difficult application process, but a lot of people did really, really good applications, a lot of towns, and there wasn't a lot out there. So I think there was close to 500 applications, and it's only at the 100, 150, 160 that the communities received the funding. So kudos to a job well done. It was done in house to our staff on this. And uh, I think we're all looking forward to seeing the pieces come forward. Like you said, the next meeting, we'll see the first piece of the bundle. Yeah. So, are there no more questions? I just want a, a big thank you from all of us for this one. Thank you. Staff's work. And Appreciate it. So I don't think there's a motion on this one. No, it was more of a information. Information. Perfect. Right. So with that good news, I guess we can move forward to item eight on the agenda, which is minutes of previous meeting. Uh, so item A, uh, regular council minutes of March 11th. So the motion is that the council of the town of Grand Bay Westfield adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of March 11th, 2024, as presented. I have a motion. That's the Murphy. And a second, with that Councilor Bill. Any questions or comments? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion is carried. Okay. And to item 8B uh, is email poll records management. And the motion is that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield ratify the email poll regarding records management. And do I have a motion for this one? So moved. Councilor Goffman, one second. Councilor McIntosh, one. Any discussion or questions on this item? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion is carried. And now the items C and D, which remember were added on to the agenda at the beginning, um, which are in relation to half the Housing Accelerator Fund. And so item 8C is uh, email poll rehousing accelerator fund. Is that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield gratify the email poll for Housing Accelerator Fund? Do I have a motion? Councilor Berkey, and second to that. Councilor McIntosh Lawrence and uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. The motion is carried. And then the last one, the email poll about the half action plan. That the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield receive and file the Housing Accelerator Action Plan. Uh, can I have a motion? Thank you, Councilor Brooklyn, second. Councilor Brockman. Uh, any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. So that was a long one. We're all done. So item nine, unfinished business. Since we did dealt with the housing accelerator fund under eight, but there's nothing under item nine. Uh, so we move on to ten, which is uh, bylaws. And on deck we have third reading of bylaw number PS006, Prosser Court Street closing. So this is one we did see at the last uh, last meeting. So it's third reading by title, bylaw number PS-006. Crosser Court Street closing. Do I have a motion for the reading? Councillor Bailman, the second one. Councillor McIntosh Lawrence. And any questions or comments on this motion? It's a good story. We can sell some vacant land and uh, we don't use and yeah. it'll be a tax dollar for us for time. So it's good. So all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion is carried. I believe we right or wrong to item 11. And 11A on the agenda we dealt with when um, our auditor was here, so that is done. So we're now move on to item 11B, which is the digital sign policy. And this one should be familiar. We did hear about this policy at the last meeting, I believe. Um, so the motion, I'll read it first before we discuss, is that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield approve the digital signage policy for immediate effect. Do you have a motion? And any comments or questions on this item? No, so this is a good one. We didn't hear all about it. It's just to make it more um, efficient on the digital side. Did you want to give a quick overview or something new from last time? No, if you want, uh, I'll turn it over to the communications okay. manager. Uh, as you mentioned, this is uh, an updated policy. And as we mentioned last meeting, uh, a couple of the highlights would be a uh, priority listing now of what would be published in uh, first priority would be calendar related or sponsored messages followed by three community events and activities and then fundraising community events and activities. 
another update is that we would, um, the preference now is to have the request submitted by the days in advance prior to the event. And that recurring daily, weekly, or monthly events would not be eligible for publishing. Those are a few major updates. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay. So, all in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? No, motion is carried. Thank you very much. All right, so on to 11C, it's the pavement marking tender. It says the motion is that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield award tender T02-2024 pavement markings to Four Seasons Sports Limited for the tender price of $55,019.25 plus HST for the year 2024 with renewal opportunities for the next two years, 2025 and 2026. Um, I guess before we discuss, can a motion? Councillor Buckle, I'll take Councillor Mike Dodgeler for a second. Thanks. Uh, so, John, can you give us a bit of information on? Yes, uh, actually, I'm going to turn it over to our work commissioner. You can speak to the level of <coughs> Yes, this is a tender we, we do on the last time, which is three years ago, that we incorporated the, the opportunity to renew. But each year we paint the, uh, the lines uh, on most of the Crosswalks for Valley Drive. And to do that, we go to to the, this company. Uh, we've used them for the last six years and have not any issue with them. And again, they went to tender again, so now it's an opportunity to renew. So we don't have to tender every year with anything. So, but, uh, yeah. Any other questions or comments? Council Why is it paint now last in more than two years, three years? Is this come now every year? You paint the lines every year? Wow. Uh, I mean, the paint's not last like used to, is it? Yeah, I can't comment. I don't know that it's yeah, lasting like that. It doesn't matter. Well, every year, that's a lot of money to pay, pay lines every year. $5,000, that's a quite a chunk of change. But we need, we need them. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine what the province is paying for all of the highways because the paint doesn't last. Is it quality paint? Or is it something doing different? Or It's always been that way as far as I know. And I don't think it has to do with the quality of the paint. I think it's got the fact that it's on the road, the number of vehicles going over it, snow plows scraping the streets, and it's just normal wear and tear. Yeah, money. <laughs> so, Mr. And Mr. Works Department, did I do okay? Yes, you did. And again, it's something that you'll see all, all, all on this mountain. They do it anyway. Because again, they do wear off the tire paint where all the violets and the whole thing goes So it is sort of an annual thing. And again, you're doing it for the safety of the motors and people out there in the sun. So again, you want to, you want to keep it as sharp as you can. You could keep the motors in line so you don't want to paint it as much as possible. It's a, it's a balancing act, but it's what you need to provide a safe community. That's the way you can tap yeah, it's a lot of money, it's all I'm saying. <laughs> Any other questions or comments on the motion? Just to comment, Your Worship, uh, I know in uh, rural New Brunswick, especially where it's foggy, like on the Kingston mm -hmm. Peninsula, I am so thankful that those lines are painted annually, uh, such as you know where you are and where, mm -hmm. what side of the road you're on. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, uh, it may be pricey, but I think it's uh, well worth the price that we Safe. make the town safer. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting note. I know a lot of new cars do read the lines, so it's even getting more important as time goes on with, with that feature on some vehicles. I noticed that some roads have little little indents and it's on the center lines that the paint will go in better and it'll last longer. And because you know, sometimes it's older shoulder the road, you have those little indents on the like a rumble strips. Yeah. Some some communities have it right down the center of the road, so the paint goes inside and it won't be affected by tires or by. Uh, by anything else too, but it's an idea down the road. If there's no more questions, comments, are all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? No, no, no. Motion is carried. Thank you, everyone. So the next two uh, 11 D and E are related. So the first is uh, Public Street, Smith Lane, Harrison Subdivision. The motion is that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield assent to the public street parcels as shown on subdivision plan, Harrison Subdivision, as prepared by Desaunier Surveys Inc., dated March 8, 2024. Another motion. That's a microdotal line, so second. 
Councillor Burke. And so uh, I guess can we have a bit of information on this one as well? Um, turning this over to the development officer. He's been nursing this one for quite some time. This, this is one of several street improvement uh, projects, mostly them coming from the residents themselves, asking for uh, capital improvements. Uh, this is the sixth year for this one, so uh, it, it seems like a, a, a long mountain to climb, but um, Fairly typical with other streets that we've done, getting everybody on board is, is, uh, isn't always easy. And in this case, we've got two property owners uh, getting five parcels to the town. Any questions or comments on the motion? There being none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Just the second one, I believe, is the same, same issue, but I'll read the motion separately. It's E, Public Street, Smith Lane, Robiar, subdivision, that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield is sent to the Public Street parcel as shown on subdivision plan, Harrison subdivision, as prepared by Dissonier Surveys, Inc., dated March 8, 2024. And do I have a motion? Okay. Councillor Bailman's and Seconder Councillor Burby. Um, and I guess this is the same issue. Are there any more questions or comments? No, there being none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you all. So now uh, we'll move on to, I guess, the one of the last new business. It's the Lions Club Renewal, 11F on the agenda. Uh, and that's the Council of the Town of Grande Westfield authorized the CAO to engage RC strategies to develop a concept plan for the purpose of renewing the Lions field. So I have a motion. Councilor McMichelin, second. Councilor Roth. Okay, so this is a, another good news one, an exciting one, so I can ask John maybe to give a bit of background on this one for everyone. Sure. Um, this uh, plan kind of came out of our frustration last year when we wanted to develop a uh, dirt pump track. And um, so, you know, during our um, capital budget discussions, you know, what can we do that we own? So the decision was made then to go with uh, reviewing the Lions field. And um, this is an exciting project. RC Strategies have worked with us before, both with the town and with RBCC. And uh, they're experts in this. They do, it's, it's all they do is parks and recreation. Uh, so we're looking forward to working with them. And um, yeah, I don't know what more to say about this at this time. Do you have any comments or questions on this particular motion? Just a question, Your Worship. Uh, part of this renewal, uh, in terms of reference uh, to the CAO through your worship, is it to look at our ex the existing recreational infrastructure at, of the existing Lions Park and to quantify and determine the usable life left of some of those assets? Could that be integrated into the plan? Yeah, that would be part of it. I don't know that they'll do a condition assessment. Uh, the playground equipment there is beyond its uh, expected life cycle. Uh, this both the CAO and the recreation director are concerned about that structure. Uh, we are making repairs to it annually to ensure its safety, uh, but really it's been there much longer than it should have been. And um, that whole area needs for your own counselor, and uh, we're looking forward to being able to uh, get some work done without any kind of time for it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a comment. Yeah, this is a a good news item to look at um, renewing this community area and uh, making it a recreational hub. And it would be moving forward, it would be great to be able to work uh, with the Lions Club on this initiative and bring it to fruition. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on this one? No? Well, I'm happy to see this one. This is uh, so all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And motion is carried. Thank you. <coughs> So the next one is the added item to the agenda, which is 11G, which is related to federal infrastructure not keeping pace with population growth. And it's a long motion, so before I read the motion, maybe I'll ask John to give a brief update this to the addition. Um, fundamentally, what the uh, federal government is looking at doing is changing the conditions in which we're eligible to receive the money. Uh, previously, it was known as the gas tax fund, and it was restricted in how we could use it to roads primarily. And then, um, I think it was two years ago, maybe three years ago, I don't recall anymore, it was changed to be much more broadly used. It, 
it's uh, the conditions were released so much that it was almost unconditional. Now we're looking at tying the award of this money to new housing. And uh, further, I'm going to turn this part over to the CFO. Uh, uh, they're changing the reporting on it, which would be significantly more onerous. And if you look at the consent agenda, uh, you'll see the report that the CFO provided uh, in that which in that will be going to the federal government. But I'll let them talk to you a bit about what the expectations are going forward on the reporting. Yeah, thank you, John. So what we're hearing about uh, future reporting requirements, uh, they're going to be quite elaborate, quite time, of, time intensive, and very detailed. Um, in the consent agenda, there's the report for last year's projects, uh, which are broad, uh, for example, uh, street improvements, and then that's the project, and then we decide what streets we'd like to improve each year, and we just report against the total we spent on improving our streets. Uh, what we're hearing is in the future, uh, they'll want to know what streets, when, um, and that, that time, they will be, will be bound to that timeline to those specific uh, streets. As you know, priorities change over time, conditions either accelerate uh, or roads last longer than we anticipate. So we will lose flexibility to pivot uh, where we need to and do the projects that uh, really need to be done. Not good news. So with that introduction, I'll read the motion. Bear with me, because it is a long one. Whereas Canada is experiencing record population growth, having welcomed 1.25 million new Canadians last year alone, and whereas, according to the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, we need to build at least 3.5 million additional homes by 2030, and municipalities need to build or expand the infrastructure to accommodate this growth, and whereas FCM, Federation of Canadian Municipalities, has estimated that the cost of the municipal infrastructure required to support housing development is, on average, in the range of 107,000 per unit. And whereas, according to Statistics Canada, the cost of up to upgrade, the cost of upgrade existing municipal infrastructure so that it's in a state of good repair is in the range of 170 billion. And whereas non-residential construction price inflation has risen by 29% since the end of 2020, and municipalities are facing soaring costs for infrastructure projects without a corresponding growth in revenue. And whereas unlike federal and provincial revenue, municipal tax revenue has not increased in recent years along with inflation, economic growth, or population growth. And whereas municipalities are facing a gap in federal infrastructure funding as the 10-year Investing in Canada infrastructure program has come to an end, the Canada Community Building Fund is being renegotiated permanent public transit fund is set to start in 2026. Whereas the Canada Community Building Fund, CCBF, which was formerly known as the Federal Gas Tax Fund, provides more than $2.4 billion in annual capital funding directly, directly to municipalities through a predictable allocation mechanism, and municipalities of all sizes use the CCBF to deliver direct results for Canadians by building and renewing critical core public infrastructure including water infrastructure, local roads, public transit and community, and cultural and recreational facilities. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the federal government work with agreement signatories and municipalities to maintain the CCDF as a source of direct, predictable, long-term funding for local infrastructure priorities, and be it further resolved that the federal government commit in budget 2024 to the next generation of infrastructure programs including a new program for water and wastewater infrastructure and an increase to the Disaster Mitigation and Adaptation Fund, and be it further resolved that the federal government convene provinces, territories, and municipalities to negotiate a municipal growth framework to modernize the way that municipalities are funded in order to enable Canada's long-term growth. Can I get a motion? Motion. Okay. Okay. Councilor Murphy, and second. Councilor Murphy. So are there any questions or discussion on this law motion? A very important issue. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion is carried. Thank you, everyone. So that is the end of the business on the agenda. And we can move on to item 12.
because we haven't seen enough numbers tonight from the bills for payment. And the motion is that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield authorize the March 25th, 2024 bills for payment as presented in the amount of $93,630.54. And can I get a mover? And Councilor Brown is the second. Councilor Burby. And any questions on the bills for payments? One, Your Worship, uh, it's item two which is uh, payable to Absolute Traffic and Science Solutions Limited, um, a speed motion sign in the amount of $4,305.31. What is this uh, equipment uh, used for, and uh, have we had one before? Um, I'll turn that over to the Works Commission. <laughs> yes, thank you, Councilor, for, for that, that question. Yes, uh, what we have, uh, we currently have in stock, that, that we do have a speed monitor. Those are signs that you may have seen in the past that we have on the side of the road. That record your after speed when other vehicles are through, and this is a replacement sign. One of your signs was not, not working, so now we'll again have two again, and we'll be able to put them at various locations when we receive complaints about speeding vehicles. Uh, then we put the signs up so we can actually get some real data as to how many vehicles are speed, speed they're going to be. We can monitor that, and then we can assess well, what needs to be done to do that to try traffic calming or whatever that needs to be required. But uh, again, that's what the sign is for, so give us the ability to put them out. Some data will speed if, if there is such a, a problem. <laughs> and, uh, so, so, yeah. and I would assume, uh, through your worship, but uh, in addition to recording speeding, it would also record numbers of vehicles. Oh, yes, 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 the number of vehicles and the, the, the time, day, and all of that. Thank you very much. So, uh, <laughs> does, does it record license plates? No. Pardon? No. Oh. Any other questions on the bill? Uh, no, number, number 26, uh, Bounty Castle. Who, who, who had the last Bounty Castle? $2,100. To the recreation district. Yes. That's your worship. That's uh, the security uh, Bounty Castle for upcoming Canada Day. So in advance, we need to uh, make sure that we have um, access to them and that we know that they're going to be delivered along the day so we pay uh, in advance to secure them. I don't thought that we had. I said, where do we have the bounce council? All right. Thank you. <laughs> That's actually a good thought of candidates. Yeah. 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 Thank good. you very much. So if there's no other questions, I can ask all in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? There being none, motion is carried. Thank you. So moving on to the consent agenda, which I'll read. So that's an under 13A, uh, letter or UMID property tax insert reply. B. Letter, Town Property Tax Insert Reply to GMB. C, Letter Regarding Electrical Wiring and Building Permits. D, CCBF 2023 Annual Report. E, Building Inspection Report, report February 2024. F, Invitation and Time Awards and Consent Agenda. So the motion is that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield receive and file the Consent Agenda items from March 25th, 2024. Do I have a motion? Any questions, comments? Um, yes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If Council can let us know if you're if any are going to the Triangle Awards, uh, please let them know. Uh, this is an event where the Y celebrates uh, volunteers. So please let the know about that. Absolutely. Any other questions, comments? All in favor? Any opposed? No, motion is carried. Thank you, everyone. So, in my favorite part of the night, which is council reports, um, I guess I'll go on the clock. I guess Council Murphy. Um, okay, March 18th. Attended the, uh, I attended the first, uh, my first engagement session with the RSC, which was very informative. There was uh, a lot of information I was not aware of in the individual departments and um, divisions that they offer. Um, on March 22nd, um, I attended the super exciting half announcement at Brundage Point. It was a great turnout and it was really nice to see a lot of support from um, neighboring communities. Um, and also on March 21st, I had my first mentoring match um, with a nice young lady at St. Rose School. So that was really, really, she was super duper excited and uh, I was too, so it was really 
time well spent. That's it for me. Thank you. <coughs> I attended the half uh, announcement. It was a very good uh, announcement for our town. So, so I'm on the Brokehead Advisory Committee, and uh, I want to thank Rob Colin and Robert McKenzie for hosting the uh, fundraiser at their under, underscore Buff uh, Buff Academy. So we did, it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so we'll find out the results of how much we made on the fundraiser. So, thank you. Um, I attended the Age Friendly meeting, and if anybody is wanting to get involved, we're still looking for volunteers. And I attended the half announcement, which is good news for the community. And I'm just trying now to think of what there was something else I attended. Oh, the RCMP on uh, last Monday, which was very good. Thank you. Um, uh, like Councillor Burby, Councillor Day, I also attended the RCMP meeting. On uh, March 19th, I had my monthly MCC uh, meeting. And out of that, um, so they announced that they're relaunching the RC, RBCC Community Cup. So I guess it's a, it's a senior hockey tournament, so that's April 6th and 7th weekend, and I think they're pretty much booked. Uh, Rock the Link date has been announced, so it's June 8th, and Power Bar is playing. Um, the guys is coming out April 26th, and Chase the Ace is still up for grabs. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the RBCC social media and they, they can let you know how to get a ticket. And the last thing was the uh, a half announcement. Uh, your worship, I have nothing to report. I've been away on holidays for the last two weeks, and yes. reluctantly, I missed the half announcement. With all the hard work that the team put together, and I feel really bad about it, but I couldn't cancel my airplane tickets. So, uh, congratulations again. I know you mentioned it earlier too, with the entire team. Uh, that was a super announcement, and we're moving forward. Thank you. And for me, I guess all I can add to to the group was I was have a pleasure to attend last week with the mayor and our CAO, uh, the UMLU, the Union of Municipalities and Forensic Advocacy Days, which were set up um, to kind of get us together to really put in as a, a brain trust in place to see how to better move forward issues facing our local governments in the province. And it was an excellent couple of days, and we got um, kudos and thank you to the leaders of the three, three city political parties in the province, and the minister and the critics and all the local governments. They all did make themselves available for questions and um, presentations to the group. So it was a, a great session and we were able to make some good contacts and uh, we'll help to move our region forward. So that was great on the end. So that being it for council reports, I guess business arising from community the whole, there being none, we can move on to adjournment. And the motion is that the council of the town of Grand Bay Westfield adjourn the meeting at 7.53 p.m. Do I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Council Mark Dashlin, the second. Council Burby, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye